Well, now we're ready to actually talk about composite functions. Here in the center, I have a graph that says that a composition of the function f with g denoted by f composed with g. Notice how I have an open circle here in between the f and the g. Let me make that bigger. There's an open circle here uh, in between the f and the g, and that is not the same thing as a as a dot, like in multiplication. It actually stands specifically for composition. And it's defined by f composed with g of x is equal to f of g of x. Now when we write it like this, what we're saying is that I'm going to evaluate the f function at g of x. Okay, and um, it's order matters specifically in this particular case. So if it's f composed with g, then f is the outside function, I like to call it, and g is the inside function. The domain of this has to do with not only the composed function, the ultimate function you're going to end up with, but you also have to take into consideration this inner function, and in this case it's what the domain is at g of x. Now that will hopefully become clearer in just a few minutes. So let's look at, we're going to look first at this example here, which says f composed of g, f composed with g at 2. So when I compose two functions together, I'm actually creating a brand new function, and I'm going to evaluate that new function at the number 2. Algebraically, we can do it without ever creating a brand new function. Let's do that first. So if I say f composed with g at 2, that is f composed of g at 2 means f of g of 2. And we always work from the inside out. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate the function g of x at the number 2. We work from the inside out. So I'm evaluating g of x at 2. So this is 2 times 2 squared minus 9. And this 2 here is replacing the x. And then we evaluate the function. So 2 squared is 4 times another 2 is 8 minus 9 is a negative 1. Now we start over, only this time I'm going to evaluate f at negative 1. So my f of x function, which is 7 times x, or negative 1, plus 1. Now where did I get that from? The negative 1 that was the result of this evaluation is now being evaluated in my f of x function up here. Hopefully you, you followed all of those circles or s highlights. So negative 7 plus 1 is negative 6. In other words, remember we're creating a brand new function here, and if I replace x in my new function with 2, I would get back the, uh, uh, the y value of negative 6. Now, if I am asked then to just go through and evaluate the function or find f composed with g of x. That's asking me to come up with, well, what is the equation of the brand new function that I'm creating? So we were, are going to go back in, and I'm going to do this again, f composed of g of x. And I'm going to rewrite it. I'm going to keep this over so we can see it. I'm going to rewrite this as f composed of g of x. What that means is, if my outside function is f, then that is represented by um, 7 times x plus 1. But everywhere there is an x in this function, and let me get rid of these highlights. Everywhere, there, I'll just, I'll just erase those. Everywhere there is an x in this function, I'm replacing it with the inside g of x. So in other words, this x here is replaced with this whole thing here. So this becomes 2x squared minus 9, and we would simplify. Okay, so I'm going to distribute the 7 and remove the parentheses. This gives me 14x squared minus 63 plus 1, or in other words, 14x squared minus 62. This is the new function that was created when I composed f with g. Now let me just show you kind of what this looks like. 
in Desmos. Now, remember that I had my original function, which I have labeled in this particular graph as h of x. That was the 7x plus 1. Then I had the second function, which is 2x squared minus 9. And you can see I have both of these graphs up here. Now when I compose the inside and the outside function in the order that we just worked it, this black line or this black parabola is the brand new function that was created based on composing these two equations in that particular order. And you can tell that this black line right here is my function, and I could probably put in um, the equation that we found. I could probably graph this on my Desmos, and they would be the same exact lines. So that's really what we're doing. We're creating a brand new function out of two functions that we already had. Now when I evaluated, so I'm going to go back here, when we started out, I didn't know what this function was to begin with, but I know that if I evaluate it in this order, if I find f composed with g of 2 using this method right here, then what I have found is my x-coordinate and my y-coordinate of a point that lies on this function. And look back here, that's exactly, let me get rid of these other two, that's exactly what I have, 2, negative 6, is a point that lies on the function that we were just talking about. And that's really what a composition function is. It's the creation of, two new, uh, of a new function based on two functions that you already had. So let's look at this last one right here. I have the function f of x is equal to the square root of x and g of x, which is x plus 2. And again, I want to evaluate the function at 2. So I have f composed with g. I'm going to evaluate it at 2. Now, I, I can just rewrite this. So algebraically, I can say f of g of x. And I'm going to evaluate the function at 2. So g of 2, in this case, is x plus 2 or uh, 2 plus 2, which is 4. And then we go and evaluate the outside function f at 4. And the f function is the square root of x, or in other words, the square root of 4, which is just 2. So when I compose f composed with g at 2, I get 2. So there's a point, 2, 2, on my new function, and, um, and that's what it did. Now let's come up with what that function actually is. So if I have f composed with g of x, let's find out what that equation is of my, new, of my composed function. So I am composing f of g of x. So everywhere there is an x in my f function, I replace it with the inside. So the square root of g of x, which is x plus 2. And that's my new composed function right there. Well, what do we do when we want to talk about the domain of this particular function? Okay, we haven't really addressed that, but remember, if we come up here, we can say that the domain of my composite function first has to address the inside. In this case, it's the inside function, which is g, and then we also combine that with the new function um, that we just created. So let's go back here and we are going to find out what the domain of this function is by saying well the domain of g, the domain of g is, what is the domain of g of x? Well this is um, all real numbers, right? This is from negative to positive infinity because I have no variables in the denominator or under a square root. So this is from negative to positive infinity. And then we come in and we combine that with, or we have to kind of uh, look at what the domain of my composition function is, which is um, this variable x is underneath the radical sign, so we're going to say x plus 2 must be greater than or equal to 0. So x has to be greater than or equal to negative 2. 
and we try to now combine the two domains together. Well, in all real numbers, combined with this restriction, leaves just this restriction. So the domain looks like uh, negative infinity to negative 2. Oh, it does not. Where's my math here? If I, if I move that over there, then that gives me a negative 2. x has got to be greater than or equal to negative 2, so let me rewrite this. This would be negative 2, x is greater than negative 2 to infinity. And that's the domain of my composed function. So, I want to back up for just a second though, and I want to ask you, in my composition functions, if I have f composed with g of x, is that the same thing then as g composed with f of x? Well, let me show you that it is not the same thing. So in this particular case, I want to look at g composed with f of x, and I'm going to do that for 2. So I'm going to erase this and I'm going to say at 2. Now when we write this, we write, um, you know, the first letter is on the outside, the second letter is on the inside. So this looks like g of f of x. And let me make this a little smaller so I can sh uh, shrink it in my screen. So what we're going to do is we're going to evaluate f of x at 2. So f of 2 would be the square root of 2, right? We replace x with 2. Now we're going to evaluate g of x at the square root of 2. So this is the square root of 2 plus 2, which is just, you know, the square root of 2 plus 2. I can't really do a whole lot with that, but I'm trying to show you that, so this is going to be the square root of 2 plus 2. So f composed with g is not the same thing as g composed with f. These two things are not uh, commutative. Order matters when you are talking about the composition of two functions.